Laws of thermodynamics dictate that conversion of chemical energy into mechanical energy becomes more efficient at higher temperatures and pressures. For example, diesel engines run at higher temperatures and pressures than gasoline engines and thereby are more efficient. Likewise, efficiencies of coal-fired electric power plants increase and greenhouse gas emissions per unit energy decrease at higher temperatures and pressures. Water at temperature above 374 degrees Celsius at pressures above 218 atmospheres becomes a supercritical fluid. A supercritical fluid has properties of both a liquid and a gas. Moreover, supercritical water has a density that changes with temperature and pressure in a continuous manner, and so power plants designed to operate under supercritical conditions scale to higher temperatures and pressures without having to accommodate two phases of water in various locations. The downside of supercritical operation is that higher temperatures and pressures demand stronger materials, tighter tolerances, and more complex control systems. In addition, supercritical water is highly reactive, and only components made of corrosive-resistant chrome and nickel alloys can withstand long exposures to it. These requirements add about 7% to construction and maintenance costs of power plants. Nonetheless, supercritical plants are more efficient, and their lower fuel costs eventually compensate for higher construction and maintenance costs. Currently, more than 400 supercritical power plants are in service worldwide, and a few ultra-supercritical plants are beginning operations in Europe and Japan. Natural gas is the second largest primary energy source for generating electricity in the United States and the world. Natural gas power plants have the advantage of modest capital costs, high fuel efficiency, operating flexibility, rapid deployment, and low greenhouse gas emissions. New natural gas power plants are coming online at an annual rate of 2% worldwide, faster than any other type, and their global share of electricity production should increase from 25% in 2004 to 31% in 2030. A natural gas electric power plant has many of the same components as a gas-fired IGCC plant, except that the natural gas plant does not need a gasifier to produce fuel from the combustion turbines nor grass treatments to mitigate sulfur dioxide or NOx emissions because refineries during the processing of natural gas remove most of the sulfur and nitrogen impurities that generate these pollutants. A basic natural gas power plant contains only a combustor, combustion turbine, and a generator. Because of this simplicity, natural gas-fired power plants are relatively inexpensive and rapid to construct, efficient to operate, and easy to maintain. Construction of a 1,000 megawatt plant may take as little as two years from start to finish. Most of the plants in the United States use combined cycle combustion and steam turbines and attain fuel efficiencies that average 39%, and plants currently under construction should approach 60% efficiency. Economies of such plants, however, fluctuates with the price of natural gas, which is usually several times more expensive than coal. Hydrocarbon fuels, be they coal, natural gas, petroleum, or biomass, release carbon dioxide upon combustion. Carbon capture and storage refers to the practice of A, collecting this carbon dioxide, B, concentrating it, C, transporting it, and D, storing it in a matter that prevents it from mixing freely with the atmosphere. The next video segment focuses on carbon capture and storage. In summary, number one, slow turnover of power plants means that the abatement of their greenhouse gas emissions will be relatively slow. Number two, Coal-fired power plants have relatively high greenhouse gas emissions per power generated, but are cheap to construct and operate it. Number three, natural gas-fired power plants are even less expensive and more rapid to construct, more efficient to operate, easier to maintain, but natural gas is several times more expensive than coal.